huge one. Oh gosh, yes, yes. Ho, 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 my gosh, folks. What's going on and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. In this video, y'all, we're gonna talk about my top four lures for fishing summertime, grassy and weedy situations. And of course, to catch fish like this. My name is Tyler and let's talk about it. How's it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers no matter where you live in the country, whether you're a bass boat angler, kayak, john boat, or a bank fisherman. This channel is for you. You belong as a part of Team TRF. So hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on. As always, if you guys are curious about a certain technique, make sure you guys are searching on YouTube, Tyler's Real Fishing, and then whatever topic you want to learn about. So whether it's Tyler's Real Fishing, frog fishing, Tyler's Real Fishing, dock skipping, any sort of technique that you are curious about, in your angling pursuits I've probably made a video on, and if I haven't, drop it down in the comment section below. So I travel all around the country catching bass on video for you guys, and I have fished in basically every weedy situation out there, whether it's Lake Okeechobee in Southern Florida, and everything out there is weeds. Whether you are in Northern Minnesota and you have a plethora of different weeds, you have coontail, milfoil, uh, pond weed, lily pads, reeds, I mean, I'm not even naming a quarter of the ones in Minnesota, we have tons of weeds up here, or you are anywhere else in the country that has any kind of weed or grass. Now, when I say that, weed, the terms weed or grass, I mean things like this. It took me all of about a second and a half to gather all of this up from the, uh, the water just now. This here is what I call weeds or grass. Down south, we refer to it as grass. Up north, a lot of you guys refer to it as weeds. Whatever the terminology is, this is the stuff I'm talking about, the juicy green stuff that bass love to live in. I am not talking about snot grass or moss. That's the kind of algae stuff that grows usually on top of, of, of matted vegetation, sometimes in bodies of water. It covers things, and of course, it covers your lures and makes fishing very difficult. I am not talking about that. That is not the grass or weeds I'm discussing. I have made a video on the best ways to target that mossy, snotty grass stuff, and I will leave that linked in the video description below. But today, I'm gonna talk about my top four lures when it comes to fishing around any depth and any kind of grassy, weedy situation. I know this is a very broad topic, but I wanna give, in my experience of traveling over the past few years, from what I can tell, these are my top four lures for fishing around weeds anywhere in the country. I know there's going to be some nuanced ones that you guys love to use out there, but if you are struggling to catch bass consistently in the weeds, this is a video for you. So let's start with lure number one for the weeds, and that is going to be my singular reaction lure, the vibrating jig. The Strike King Thunder Cricket is just an absolutely unbelievable lure, and this is the vibrating jig. If you guys have missed somehow the wave of the vibrating jig across the country, uh, you're missing out because this thing just catches fish everywhere it goes. Now, there's a lot of lures you can throw in and around grassy, weedy situations that fall into that moving bait reaction bait category. Basically, all of them. I mean, you can throw ones with treble hooks, ones without treble hooks, ones with singular hooks, multiple hooks. You can throw all kinds of moving baits in and around grass. I'm talking spinner baits, swim baits, uh, lip crank baits, lipless crank baits, the list goes on and on. But I feel like in all my situations out there that, that I've encountered in bass fishing, as well as all the ones that I've seen pro fishermen encounter, and trust me, I follow very closely both pro tours, MLF and Bassmaster, and I travel on tour with MLF, there's just no better lure for covering water all year long around grass than a vibrating jig. I know that in the pre-spawn, the lipless crankbait bite is really fun, and the jerkbait bite can be great on the edge of grass. I understand that, and they're definitely worth trying. But this video is about the top four for anybody out there to statistically catch the most fish possible. And you look at every boat deck of a pro angler in a grassy situation, and they have one of these lures, a vibrating jig rigged up. I have made a very detailed instruction on everything you need to know about the vibrating jig. As with all the rest of these lures, I have very detailed instructionals that I will leave below the gear uh, in the video description for each one of these. Uh, but the gear that I use for a vibrating jig has changed over the years. I've had a bunch of different rods and reels that I like to throw this thing on. 
but I'm just now trying the brand new Bladed Jig Thunder Cricket Rod in the Team Lose Signature Series rod line. I don't know when this video will drop, but I don't think these rods are out yet. They will be out very, very soon. This rod here was designed by uh, MLF Pro Andy Montgomery. He loves throwing a vibrating jig. It is a seven foot three, medium heavy, fast action rod, which is kind of interesting because I've never thought about throwing a medium heavy, fast action. I'm guessing something is special about this rod and I have to ask Andy the next time I hang out with him what exactly makes this rod special more special than your standard 7.3 medium heavy jig rod that I like to use um, but I have had success throwing this thing haven't lost many fish if I can even think of losing one at all uh, and it's very very sensitive my other favorite rod is the KVD I believe it's the composite casting seven the cc7 it is a seven foot medium or medium heavy uh, composite rod composite being a different style of rod blank that fits more with reaction style lures and of course i will leave all those linked below uh, my my vibrating jig line is usually 15 or 17 pound fluorocarbon this is uh cigar abrazex and then i have any reel out there really, but I have a, a loose tournament MP. I think this reel is one of the best ones out there for the budget. The gear ratio for this is a six, eight to one right now. Usually I throw a seven, five to one, but because I wanted to keep my vibrating jig a little bit lower in the water column, I wanted to force myself to slow down more. So I threw a slightly slower gear ratio. Now that is lure number one, the only reaction bait per se, the only moving bait per se, you can move the rest of these, but this is the only one that actually has to be moved in order for it to function properly. So let's move on to lure number two, one of my favorite ones out there, the topwater frog. When it comes to fishing topwaters in weedy situations, there really is no alternative besides a frog. Sure, you could talk about the weed edge, the weed lines, and throw a popper, a whopper plopper, and even a buzz bait if that grass is, is under the surface enough. But most of the time, that's not going to be the case. In 90% of grass fishing situations, if we're talking top water, we're talking a top water hollow bellied frog. Now, you can also throw the, the buzz toad and, and several other versions, kind of the, the, uh, the propeller frog, but I just love throwing two standard frogs the Strike King Pad Perch and the Strike King Poppin' Pad Perch. Now, where do I use a popping frog versus a regular frog? I have discussed that fully in my frog instructional, so you guys can go watch that to learn when I throw certain frogs. But there's not a whole lot of explanation to do. Fish love to live underneath that canopy, underneath that those weeds that form a nice roof over their head. And as soon as they hear a topwater frog hopping across their, their roof, they have nothing else to do but explode on it, eat that thing, and uh, ensues one of the most fun ways to catch bass out there. So I don't really have a whole lot else to say about the frog. If you're struggling with, with your treble hooked topwaters around weeds, stop forcing yourself to throw lures that, that are, are ineffective. Throw stuff that actually works for the situation and for topwater grass especially I mean the grass that you guys see behind me right here this is all froggable stuff right here uh, unless the fish are on the edge which sometimes they are and you can catch them on a different style topwater with, tre with treble hooks uh, I I'm going to be throwing a frog 95% of the time the gear that I throw a frog really doesn't vary a whole lot. I love throwing it on a 7.4 Heavy, either my TP1 Black Speed Stick or my KVD Rod. I have it right now on the Pro-TI. I don't think the Pro-TI is that much greater of a rod than the TP1 Black for double the price, so I just have this one because I still have this rod laying around. I'll probably give this one away to one of you guys here soon. Really awesome rod. I don't think it's quite worth the double price tag of the TP1 Black, so I'm going to leave my two frog rods rigged below. I always use 50-pound Seaguar uh, Smackdown Braid but I have uh, fished in some heavier cover situations where I try to really winch fish out of cover and so I put on 65 pound braid. You don't really need 65 pound braid for a frog but if you're throwing around super heavy thick vegetation 65 pound can help get a fish out of that cover uh, and then a high speed gear ratio is needed right here I have a 8 3 to 1 uh, loose tournament pro. And again please order all your tackle through the links in the video descriptions whether you're ordering on tackle warehouse for loose and other products or you're are just ordering off of Lou's and Strike King, make sure you guys are using those discount codes below. I do not have a discount code for Tackle Warehouse, just free shipping on Lou's with code TRF and 10% uh, off StrikeKing.com with code TRF, which is an awesome deal. But if you guys order anything besides just Strike King or just Lou's, make sure you guys click the Tackle Warehouse specific links down below. That helps me out a ton, make a living, and continue to do this for you guys. So with the first two lures done and arguably the most fun of the four lures, let's move on to lure number three, and that is going to be your standard Texas rig soft plastic stick bait. I'm convinced 
that anywhere you go across the country, there is no better lure for fishing around grass, both deep and shallow, than this lure right here, the soft plastic stick bait. This here is the Striking Ocho, my favorite one. It is the six inch, and it is in watermelon red flake. The soft plastic stick bait is the only soft plastic in this video that I've chosen for weeds, and you might think, Tyler, you're crazy. You love throwing a soft plastic jerk bait like the, the, uh, the caffeine shad, or you love throwing a curly tailed worm, or a shaky head, or a jig worm. There are tons of ways, and tons of different soft plastics to throw in and around grass, but I'm talking about percentages here. What lure do I pick up when I need to catch fish around vegetation? And that is going to be the Ocho, whether wacky rigged or Texas rigged, uh, depending on the situation. And I've made a video about that as well. I think this lure is just the best one out there. And the main reason for me why I pick this soft plastic over any others in most situations is because it is the most weedless. When you go to pick this thing up out, either, either out of on top of the weeds or through the weeds, it is basically the least intrusive uh, design out there. It is just a cylinder, and you're just pulling that, that slender little thing through the grass. It hardly has any drag. There's no appendages to get caught. There's no bulky presentation. You can fish this thing in really thick grass, really thin, sparse grass. It is just, it is an amazing lure. I don't know what the heck it represents. I don't think it represents anything, to be honest, besides an opportunity. As I talk about, bass are opportunistic feeders. Uh, and so this thing just looks tantalizing. I love throwing a wacky rig around deeper grass and a, and a Texas rig around really deep grass or really shallow grass. It's just one of the best fish catchers out there. My wacky rig setup is going to be a 610 medium heavy bait caster. I will have that one linked below. And then my Texas rig is usually a 7 two medium heavy to a seven, three medium heavy, depending on how deep of water I'm fishing. And then if I'm flipping and pitching this thing, it is my classic seven, four heavy TP1 black speed stick. Usually I throw the six inch Ocho on nothing less than 15. It's either 15 or 17 pound line. The only time I ever drop down anymore to 12 pound fluorocarbon or 10 is to crank or throw a finesse jig uh, or throw a little swim bait on a bait caster. I'm hardly ever throwing less than 15 pound line on a bait caster anymore. So with lure number three done, I say we move on to lure number four, which is technically more of a category, and that is the jig. All of my traveling for this channel has really opened my eyes to the diversity of the jig. The jig is not just something that you flip in a brush pile or, or, or a bush. The jig is not something that you put underneath docks. The jig is not something that you just cast out deep or like a football jig for offshore structure. The jig is a really, really good grass lure. You know, growing up, I always threw the Texas rig around grass. I always threw the one that I just talked about, the striking ocho around grass. But the more that I've traveled and the more places I've fished, the higher quality fish that I catch in grass oftentimes don't come on the traditional ones you think about. They come from me on the jig. The jig is just a big fish catcher. If you all have watched the channel over the past few weeks, you've seen it's also a numbers fish catcher. Fish love this thing. It imitates a bluegill and a crawfish so well, depending on what those bass are feeding on, it can imitate either one of those. And my main two jigs that I'm throwing around grass are going to be the Outcast Tackle uh, Pro Swim Jig and the Outcast Tackle Stealth Fighter Jig. The Stealth Fighter being more of a, a grass flipping jig, so flipping it in and around grass holes, maybe finding a, a, a grass line and kind of hopping that jig out of there and then of course the swim jig is used for that really shallow water those cruising fish that are in and around that grass not specifically target oriented I'm not you know casting it at specific lily pad clumps or like a big clump of grass there it's more of just a cover water tactic so when I said that the vibrating jig was my only lure in this in this category that was a moving bait the swim jig technically is uh, a moving bait because you're supposed to swim it but it doesn't have near the reaction power that the vibrating jig does this is more of a sight fishing lure for a lot of those fish Fish up shallow. Uh, I've had fish chase a swim jig down from a long ways away. But I'm just telling you guys, you have to try it to believe me. I, I think I have a video coming out soon, or it just came out on the channel, about everything you have to know about the jig from trailers to how to, to how to fish it, how to feel for that bite. But once you get the hang of it, the jig is just a bigger fish catcher than anything in this list. And one feature I think the jig has that everything else in this list does not, uh, maybe the vibrating jig a little bit with, with ripping it out of the grass when you get stuck, is that the jig has a presence when it bursts out of that grass. When you pull a, a Texas rigged Ocho or a wacky rigged Ocho out of some grass, it doesn't really have a whole lot of vibration, not vibration, a whole lot of a presence, a whole lot of moving water to it. But when you kind of feel that jig get stuck in the grass and then kind of pop your rod tip, it flings that jig out of there. The grass, I kind of imagine like someone, you know, 
bursting through a door like a battering ram in, in, the, in the ancient, you know, night's time, and the door kind of bursts into pieces. That's what I imagine happens when a jig gets yanked out of some grass, and those fish down there looking at this jig, wondering like, is that, is that bluegill stuck in the grass? And then all of a sudden it jolts out of there. They have nothing they can do besides eat this thing up. And oftentimes the biggest fish that's looking at it is going to eat the jig. If y'all are curious about how to fish the jig, like I said, that video will be out soon on the channel. And I also made a few videos last year on uh, jig trailers, specifically uh, swim jig trailers, football jig trailers, finesse jig trailers, the best trailer for each application. I also talked about how to fish every single type of jig from swim jig, finesse jig, flipping jig, casting jig, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, it's all linked in the video video description beneath the tackle for these lures. And my rod and reel combos for the jig vary uh, tremendously depending on how thick of cover I'm fishing, what type of jig I'm fishing, but usually it's 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon, occasionally 25 pound fluoro if I'm flipping or pitching underneath docks and into wood. But this video is not about docks or wood, this video is about grass. So usually 17 pound fluorocarbon is what I use for my jigs. With a 7.3 medium heavy to a 7.4 heavy, that's kind of the, the two rods that I use for most of my jig applications. So that is all that we got for you guys. I'm excited to show you guys some more awesome fish catches from up in New York. Enjoy this stuff, and we'll see y'all next time right here on TRF. Gosh, there we go. All I had to do was go to the shady side. My goodness, my first cast on the shady side. Wow, that's a nice one. Okay, literally worked all down the bank on the sunny side. All I had to do was go to the shady side one time. Stinking three pounder. Wow. Okay, I guess we're gonna do a little circle here and start on the shady side. <laughs> Crazy. Got him. Oh my gosh. That was so cool. That was so cool. Yes. I saw this fish swimming. Cast a frog to him. He didn't need it. So I cast the jig by him. <laughs> and he got it. That was cool. That was stinking awesome. Thank you, buddy. Another two and a half pounder. These fish are so stinking fat. I love New York largemouth. Oh, cool little guy. But I watched him explode on some bluegill and I said, not so fast. I'm gonna throw over to you. We guy. Oh, feels good. There's a fish right there. Come on. He's still there. He's still there. I knew it. I knew he was there. I knew he was there. Just had to take it slow. Oh, all right. Bring it in, buddy. Bring it in here. Wow, that was fun. See, when a fish explodes on your frog in a mat, a cheese mat like this cheese here, the fish is still there. And you miss the frog, the fish is still there. It hasn't moved 25 feet away. It's, it's still there. Made a few casts, just kind of kept missing the area and maybe going too fast, so I really slowed it down. Gave it time for that fish to... Uh, come and eat it man i'm liking this i'm liking this oh come on man dang it ah i work my way all the way through the sludge and a big one eats it all the way back there and i just don't get a hook into him man ah my drag wasn't even loose just lost him Holy cow! My gosh! Oh, it's a pike. Oh. Oh. That was one of the scariest bites I've had in my entire life. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, wow. Thank you, buddy. Oh, oh. ow, I hurt my shoulder. Ah, okay, let's keep it going. If I get a bite, I'm done for. There's no way. Oh my gosh! Holy cow! That was awesome. That was awesome. I stinking got him in the boat. Holy cow. Over three different sticks. That right there is something incredible. Not a big one. If it was any bigger, I might have had an issue. But <laughs> didn't lose him. That's awesome. Tiny little guy. Thanks, buddy. Eat it. Eat it. Got, the, got her on the jig. Got her on the jig. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. These fish are dumb as rocks when it comes to this jig. Oh, oh, oh. that is so dang cool. Look at how he ate that. Saw this fish swimming, missed her on the frog. Wouldn't eat the frog again. Still was in the same area and I was like, well, might as well throw the, dig, the jig down there. Oh my gosh. That thing is down there. My gosh, that's awesome. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you, friend. So much fun. Never gets old. The day that gets old is the day that I quit. Another one right here. Where'd you go? Gosh, that is so awesome. It's like, oh, it's like sight fishing. It is sight fishing but with a jig, not beds. Holy cow, this is awesome. This is so cool. I've been telling you guys, the only four lures you need are a jig, soft plastic worm, vibrating jig, and a frog. That's all you need. Nothing else. I mean, yeah, lipless crankbait catches them, but for the vast majority of the year, those are the only four baits you need. Watch out, folks. This is about to get dumb. This is about to get dumb. This is about to get dumb. Told you, told you, told you, told you, told you. Yes, fry garters. Let's go. First cast with the old wacky. First cast with the old six inch Ocho. Got him. Got him, got him. That is awesome. Four pounder. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, we have found the mega load. I was wondering where all the large mouth in this entire pocket went, and they are all back here at the exact same time. Ho, 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 here we go. Gosh, get through, get through, yes. That right there, folks, is why you get 65 pound Smackdown braid. Because I just took him through about 17 branches. Hook still on the top of the mouth. Fish as lively as ever. That right there, 65 pound braid, Seagar Smackdown. Get you some. You can't do that on monofilament. I'm sorry. You can't do that on fluorocarbon. You can't do that with a spinning rod. You just, you just can't. I tell you this because I love you. Get the right gear for this. Well, folks, that is going to do it for this video. I'm out of time. I got to go do my freelance videography deal at MLF. But uh, if you enjoyed it, hit the gosh darn subscribe button. It has been so much fun to be out here with you guys. I guarantee there's so many more fish than the, even the ones that I missed. There's so many I didn't even see. Fry garters, frog eaters. Man, this place is just so dang cool. I love the St. Lawrence River. So again, we'll see you guys next time on TRF. Make sure y'all have those post notifications on and we'll teach y'all something about fishing next time.